Hi folks. Now that we're talking about momentum and impulse, um, a very common graph to look at is a graph of force as a function of time. Um, you will likely remember that force and time are the two components, or the two, uh, uh, yeah, short components of impulse. All right, we can define impulse as being the product of force and time. All right, so we're going to say that there are uh, forces that vary like this from time zero to time three t. All right, we're at time t. There's a force two f that's being applied at time three t. There's a force f being applied there, and I see uniform rates of change of force. And so some very typical stuff to talk about or, or uh, be able to ideally analyze are things like what impulse occurs, what impulse does mass m experience um, over this first time interval? Well, um, by definition, impulse j is f delta t. That's one part of one of a couple of ways to calculate impulse, but since we have an ft graph, it sure does make sense. Now you have a couple of options here um, on how to do this, but the bottom line is since this force is not constant over time interval zero to t, right? This is kind of like our delta t1. Um, what force do we use? Well, the bottom line is we use the average force, right? And we can always do that. We can always use average force. It's just a question of, you know, how easy or difficult is it to find the average force? Well, it's pretty easy here. Um, Hopefully what we can tell is, um, you know what I want to do? Let me change these. Ah, that's fine. We'll leave it like that. Um, so, well, our average force during this first interval is that. And our time interval, or our, yeah, our delta T is T. All right, so the force varies, you'll notice. We could write this if you want. F average is F naught plus F final over 2 when these things, uh, when this force varies at a nice constant rate like it does. So F naught is 0. F final is 2F divided by 2. That's just F. Fair enough? A little trickier down here. Number 2, what change in momentum over this second interval, delta T2, from t to 3t, well, j is f average times delta t. Well, what's the average force? Well, notice the force changes from 2f to f. That means that the average force is uh, 3f over 2. You get me? Here's the average force. average in our second interval. So halfway between 1 and 2f is 1 and a half f. So there's that. Well, times our delta t, our delta t is from t to 3t, that's 2t. All right, so here our impulse is 3ft. Okay, so just make sure you can identify the average force during each interval over which the force changes uniformly, right? You can't just say that the average over the whole 3t is, you know, you, you can't say that from now to now I'll find the average because there's two intervals over which force has um, a nice constant rate of change. You have to look at each of those intervals separately. All right, but what we can now do is now we can say, what's the final velocity of this object, assuming that it starts at rest? All right, this object of mass m. Now, that means that we have to say, well, starts at rest, what's the final velocity? That means that we're going to involve some delta v. But remember, we're talking about an object of mass m. So if we look at m delta v, that's a way of expressing impulse. Well, we also know that, well, we've found another way to find the impulse, which is to find the impulse during each of the two intervals over which momentum changes. All right, 
So if this is what we call J1, this is what we call J2, our net impulse is the sum of each of those impulses. Now this is really, you know, quote, capital M. And delta V I'll write as V final minus V initial. This then starts at rest, so that goes. And what we get is, let's see, we get that um, the net momentum, or sorry, the net impulse, Ft plus 3Ft, so that's 4Ft equals m v final. So v final is 4 over it. Okay? So a nice thing that we can, you know, from a force time graph, give ourselves some expressions for how much momentum changes during any, any set interval, and then we can relate that, you know, force and time view of impulse into an M and delta V view of impulse, and then relate those. Okay? All right, folks. Thanks.